Welcome to the shop. I'm Jared and this is the Questionable Garage and this here is our 2004 Cadillac Escalade ESV. It's a budget luxury SUV. A viewer reached out to me and I was able to purchase this non-running for $550. I really initially just bought it to take the engine out of it. I was thinking to myself, $500 LQ9, yes please. And then it actually turned out to be a really nice truck. All we needed to do was fix one broken wire and we had ourselves a really good running truck that the previous owner had put a transmission in recently and it didn't really need a whole lot to make it perfect. Second episode, we were trying to fix the exhaust leak and you know, in practical fashion, we pulled the cylinder heads off and put new ones on because the exhaust studs just didn't wanna come out. Did a couple other repairs and then you know, I proved myself a liar and uh, we've got this really nice lowering kit on it now in the last episode. Now I've done all those things to turn this into the ultimate, just kind of comfortable daily driver, road trip vehicle, puppy hauler, the two great Pyrenees absolutely love it. And that gave me the idea for today's video. Can we fully outfit the ultimate road trip vehicle with all of our ultimate road trip supplies for less than $300? So with that goal in mind, I headed on over to today's video sponsor, Timu, started scrolling through all of the car supplies on the website. There's a whole lot of them, and I decided to see how many were good, or how many potentially were bad. We bought some high-priced versions of products. We bought some low-priced versions of products. We're gonna go through and compare a lot of them. That, that's probably my favorite part about the whole uh, sponsorship. I'm not required to say anything nice, so we can, if they're good, they're good. If they're bad, they're bad. Welcome to the Table of Timu or Tima, I've heard it a couple different ways and uh, I didn't have any pronunciation guidelines. So I'm gonna go with Timu because that's what I've heard most people call it. Here's our headlight polishing kits. Now again, I ordered two different ones. This is the one that I used, uh, the Pop DII, and then I've just got a DIY headlight restoration kit. Again, one thing I was trying to do with a lot of these products is find two different price points to see, does it make sense? Sometimes it does, sometimes it may not. This kit was $5.99, this was $12.99. Other than packaging, the contents are identical. So anytime you're shopping, do a good job of, you know, maybe cross-referencing a couple parts. You might be able to get the same thing a lot cheaper. Question, is it good or not? I'm gonna say yes. On the Ultimate, when I finished everything, I used two different headlight compounds. One that was included with the kit one that I had on the shelf for detailing. And what I found was the included headlight polishing kit uh, compound, it just didn't quite give the luster. I will say overall though, the tools included for the price, absolutely incredible. You've got a mandrel for your drill or your hand, use a drill or polisher. It's just way too much work to go by hand. Uh, you'll be waxing on and waxing off for many, many hours and make Mr. Miyagi very proud. But all the hook and loop sandpaper, pre-cut, really really good stuff back when i was at the dealer i bought you know a professional kit that was designed to go through about 20 or 30 cars and it was 300 dollars at the time that i bought it and really the biggest difference was the quantity of what i got it was pretty much this exact same stuff so when it at least comes to this style of headlight polishing kit on timu you're not throwing your money in the trash and it is a timu yay but be smart because you could have saved quite a few dollars ordering the exact same thing in a different box. Now, on the left side of the table is something I'm honestly really looking forward to because I really enjoy road trip music. Unlike Ed Bullion from VinWiki who somehow just goes with no radio playing at all, kind of scares me, I really enjoy some music or listening to VinWiki stories or podcasts while I'm on a long road trip. And being 2004 infotainment, it's a little bit dated in our Cadillac. So that's where you can jump in. There's a lot of different features built in, amplifiers, no amplifiers, almost none of them really have a CD player anymore. Some of you might not even know what a CD is. Just wait till you hear about an eight track. That'll really throw you for a loop. But there's a lot to look at. So that's where I've got two very different price point head units. One for $50, one that was a hundred and I think it was $110. But we've got two very different style of Android based head units. Things you need to look for when you're buying a head unit. One, a lot of them are gonna say CarPlay. Realistically, if you're spending less than $200, 
it is not going to have Apple CarPlay. It is going to have what's called Phone Mirror, um, a very universal basic system based mostly on USB. It's not generally wireless. So that's something to be aware of, this modern, real nice, seamless integration of phones. They do work well, it's just not quite the same as OE level or the expensive, expensive head units. But do you need to put a $500 head unit in your car? That's up to you. Also something that is difficult for you when you're shopping online, but a kind of indicator of the quality of a head unit is its weight. If you're having to rely on the head unit to also act as your amplifier, there should be some weight to it. An amplifier will generate heat. The MOSFETs and all of the internal workings of an amplifier, they should weigh a fair bit. So if you pick up and have an extraordinarily light plastic case, this does have a metal case, but it's just really light. And you compare that to the slightly more expensive head unit, there is a big difference. You can look at the back and the design of them. You can see the metal heat sinks built into this where this looks like it has some, it just doesn't have quite the same weight to it. You can also run into the difference of aesthetics. There's a lot that you're looking for in your vehicle. I really personally don't like the knob that's on the front of this one. I like the much more seamless, smooth design of our high price point. Now, in the budget, I'm not including vehicle interface things that you would need to set everything up just because that felt a little unfair. Some cars this will plug directly in. Some you need extra control modules to match and work with everything. So we're going to go ahead and get started installing that. Uh, so join me in the car. We are going to uh, load up some Epidemic Sound. We'll play some factory radio through all the crazy Bluetooth adapters that I need to do to make it work and then we'll get that installed and see how it does. Well, as you can tell, the dash is still apart. We have had a tremendous amount of wiring to uh, clean up. You know, there are times where I do have to say I'm wrong. And when I was introducing the radios, I said, generally speaking, they'll not have Apple CarPlay. It has Apple CarPlay, fully featured, just like in the truck. Now what I need to get it to do is I need the pack unit to um, turn on our post amplifier so we can actually listen to music because I'd really like you guys get to, to hear it in this episode, but we may not get to because editor Dwayne's got to go out of town and he's kind of waiting for this footage and I've been working on this for six hours. Not the radio's fault. I will make that very clear. The wiring instructions are simple, straightforward, and that's all doing what it is supposed to do. Just need to make the GM crazy Bose stuff be happy and talk and do what it's supposed to. And that's why I bought the expensive pack unit, because it's supposed to do that. But it's not. So I'll figure that out, and hopefully we'll play it. Otherwise, we got that little guy that you can tap, and he's your little vocal assistant. And, you know, all your other usual things. We're not going to look at the GPS, because uh, we don't need anyone else showing up. We can hit home, got a fun little car display, I'm assuming we can change what that car is. Oh yeah, look, we can follow. So we have the option of it looks like a Tesla or a Maserati. What, what happens if we hit a t-shirt? Oh, we changed the color with the t-shirt. And then, <laughs> you want to uh, customize your license plate? Look at that. Cheetah mode in our Denali. Again, interface is really nice. Super straightforward. I am pleased with it. Again, absolutely blown away with the fact that um, we have CarPlay in this. Also, you can come in here. It does have spatial audio tuning. I'm not sure how well it'll work simply because, um, well, I can't get the amplifier to kick on. And we're getting a spam phone call. How convenient. But it does offer a whole lot of options that I just need my Bose radio to let us use. All right, next up, their interior trim popping tools. It's something that if you don't have in your toolbox or in your vehicle for a road trip, maybe not as impertinent on a road trip vehicle other than getting, you know, your awesome tunes set up. 
They are incredibly useful for getting interior panels off, sometimes external panels if you need to replace a clip for a water leak like editor Dwayne just had to do. These beauties came in, they're nylon style plastic along with one metal clip for heavy prying that you need to do. They came in at under $5. Is this worth $5? Well, let me go grab a really expensive tool truck one. Here's my really expensive tool truck interior pry tools that I have used an absolute tremendous amount in their life. Now, one thing I'll be able to show you right away is you see this style and how easy it does flex versus the reinforced heavier duty from your tool truck. There are times that you do need something that's a lot stiffer. Some of the modern interior clips are absolutely brutal. They are incredibly tight to keep rattles from happening. And if you go at them with one of these style tools, it may break. Most of your older cars, you're gonna be fine with. So, so when it comes time to decide $60 or $5, what are you working on? Is it ever gonna be such a time crunch that if you accidentally break one and have to get a replacement is a problem? But I will say $5 Timu interior tools, that's another pass. That, that's, that's a yay. Also, this is a set that I got just because I wanted to see. These are wiring depinning tools. This is something a lot of people will just kind of cut and resolder whole new ends on. But if you needed to depin and re replace a plastic connector housing for one of your sensors, they're very, very valuable. Let's try this flatter paddle. Remove the, remove the inner, okay, use a smaller size. That's the beauty of it, having multiple sizes. Come on, unlock, there we go. And then we'll need, just like the one millimeter paddle here. Slide it in, lift it up. Having always had like big handle style ones, I, uh, I kind of like these round ones. They work absolutely perfectly. Uh, I think that makes it a pretty easy, again, for $2, that goes in your toolbox. That's, that, that's a good product. So uh, I guess another Timu, yay. All right, an absolute road trip accessory. We're gonna talk about zip ties. These were, uh, $2.99 and this big set with a bunch of different sizes was $10. So, I mean, you guys know what zip ties are. The big thing we'll do is we'll do the strength test. I will say it's probably worth spending the little bit extra to get the uh, multiple sizes versus just one. Let's see if we can find comparable. So those go there. You know what I should have ordered? A knife. All right, so we got two. We're just gonna do a quick circle test where it's very scientific. You put them together like this and then pull. That broke in the nylon, which means the lock held, which is actually pretty good. A lot of times on a really cheap zip tie, the lock is what fails on you. So we'll try that. And it broke the same way. So I'm wondering if they're just different packages and you have the option of ordering a variety versus not having a variety. Let's try the bigger one. Zip ties are like duct tape in your truck, in your car. You should always have them. You never know when you're gonna need it. All right, so those are keyed in. These are the biggest ones that came in the $10 kit. And again, I appreciate that the actual zip tie itself is breaking, and again, it's not locking. That said, I'd probably spend a little bit more to get all the different sizes. There are a whole lot of little ones in here, so. I mean, what what, what can I honestly say about zip ties other than I'll use them, they're, they're good. All right, next up, tire stuff. Um, there really wasn't a whole lot for high-low options. There's this with a USB recharger. I have a feeling I need to charge this first though. Let me go put this on the charger and we'll look at the other thing that I got. This is an absolute must for a road trip. I love the storage case. 
Comes with gloves. Let's see if they're uh, large American human sized. Or I guess I'm an extra large American human. Perfect, okay. So this is a tire plug kit. And what I liked about this one compared to some of the other ones is how much it actually came with and how cheap it was. This was $7 when I bought it. Uh, you price, you know, a, a, a plug kit at the store and you're getting plastic tools for a lot more than that. What I like, these are metal T handles. The gloves maybe aren't, aren't my size, but that's your boring bar, your driving bar, and a pair of pliers. So if we're being perfectly honest, a tire plug kit is a tire plug kit. They're uh, the good thick style plugs. They're gonna get you patched up going back down the road. And for the price, it's, it's a win. These aren't little flimsy plastic tools. They're nice metal cord, T-handle, and uh, a razor blade, I, I guess, so you can make the hole to plug. But we'll give that one a, the gloves, maybe not so much. Not, not at least for me, but for the average person, you know, that, that's your money well spent. Timu Ye, see if I can get it all back in. That's the real trick. Can you make it as compact as it was when you used it? And yes. Also, you know it's gonna make your car faster because it's carbon fiber. Look. All right, something that I got that is really good for a quick on the side of the road test. Just a simple test light. Normally I'm a big fan of multimeters, but again, I was trying to work in keeping everything in a real tight budget. And this has a digital readout of voltage. It's not just a light on and off. It tells you how many volts it is. The heat shrink covering the stuff, that, that leaves a little to be desired because it's, it's not necessarily shrunk. It's just on there. So to see if it works, let's bring a battery over and, you know, see if it works. We got ourselves, this is a mostly flat battery, but it does have some voltage. Connect to the ground and, all right, indicating red, assuming the universal red is a positive connection. And we're about eight volts, which is correct for this battery. Okay, so if you're at positive, it will show you green as a path to ground. It's cool, it works, but I'm gonna be perfectly honest. This was a couple bucks. It's one of those things for a couple bucks, you can pick up a cheap multimeter get slightly more precise readings. Also, it's a fully uninsulated tip, so if you're you know, probing down in an area, you could accidentally reach over and short this out compared to a multimeter, fully insulated style tip. It, it works, it's not a bad product. I probably wouldn't rebuy this. I would buy an actual multimeter to throw in your truck um, or car you just get more useful information. You're able to check continuity on everything, not just a weird ground path. You don't have the, the shorting problems. So it works, it's cool. If you like test lights, this is a thing. Not for me, but it does what it's supposed to. Speaking of uh, simple things that you can't really rate, a collapsible funnel, it's fun. I will say the size I was a little let down on. You didn't have options. Measurements were given in metric, which I'm an American. We use the nonsensical freedom units. So I didn't quite understand how small this is. So if you're trying to add fluid in a really small hole, you could cut this down to pour oil a little bit better. So the biggest thing that lets it down is its size. It's just it's a little too small to be completely practical in a car. So I probably would pass on this one or learn metric well enough to order the right size. Yeah, my table is dirty. Speaking of dirty, you wanna clean your windshield? This is one of those copies of the as seen on TV, you know, windshield cleaners. I mean, it does what it's supposed to do. So I'm not gonna say anything bad in that regard. The plastic's bent a fair bit. It's a couple dollars. If you don't have gorilla arms like I do, you know, it might work. I also got for a couple bucks some uh, microfiber rags. These are gonna be good for general purpose rags in your car, maybe wiping the interior a little bit. I, I wouldn't use them on paint. 
it might scratch it. So if you're looking for something, you know, to have in your glove box for a kid's runny nose, to wipe up a spill, clean a dashboard, but don't don't detail your paint with them. That that's kind of a win, I guess. Some Timu tools. All right, tools. I ordered some Timu tools. These are supposed to be two different tool kits. And technically they are. There is about a $30 difference between the two of them. But I got them. And this is a quarter inch six piece. This quarter inch doctor socket. Appreciate the doctor socket. This one's for professionals. This one's for doctors. I think they're the same thing. They have the exact same number of pieces. And I think we're going back to our setup that we had with the headlight polisher. This one, once again, tells you it's 53 pieces, as does this. Plastic case, not the greatest. You guys know that, that factory smell that I just got a nice whiff of. There's a lot of fluff in them, in the sense that you have a ton of bits that you maybe won't use. And I do finally understand the elastic extension. They have the flexible extensions. They do have a bit driver in each one. The ratchets look identical. One of them's engraved, one of them isn't. <laughs> this sounds like, you know, if one of those dinosaurs are coming up close to you in Jurassic Park and they're starting to use whatever noise to help locate and communicate. Or scary movie monster. Ultimately, they're two slightly different tool cases. They're the exact same at a very different price point. So that goes back to say, whenever you're shopping on one of these websites, be diligent, check around a fair bit because you can get the same thing for a lot less money. You know, if you remember way back, we did a video reviewing a couple different tool kits, including the cheapest one on Amazon. This actually feels better than the quality of tools and the cheapest one on Amazon. It's got one of the old spring style swivels, but it does have a little quarter inch swivel universal in it. If you wanted something cheap to throw in your truck to run around with, they might help you in a pinch. This again, I had a budget. I was trying not to spend more than $300 total. I probably would go to one of the local stores and pick up one of their tool kits. I feel like there might be slightly better values to be had out there, but if you're broken down on the side of the road, you do have a host of Phillips, some torques, some flatheads, and a, enough that you can get your truck potentially running again. It's decent stuff. Ratchets don't feel the best, but in a pinch, this could be the most valuable thing. In your vehicle, would I potentially buy this again? And I probably wouldn't mostly because overall what we're going to need this doesn't have it it's just enough for simple fixes you know it's that that middle of the road where yeah they'd work but i don't know that it's it's right long term all right we're running out of things on the table we still have our uh, tire pressure kit charging this is something that i saw and i thought was the most hilarious thing ever to put in your window it is a fun emoticon light. Basically, I think it's all on. You can let other people know how you're, how you're feeling. On. Did my battery go dead? I thought I put batteries in this thing. Let me go get some more batteries, fine. Jeez, that's a bummer. I love that stupid thing. Well, dang it, guys. Um, I, I tested this originally, and I thought this legitimately was like my favorite product I got off the website. Because it was just so fun and silly. It doesn't work anymore. <sighs> well, so what this was, was just a, something fun that you could put in your window, where, you know, it had a, let's see, it had a, Kind of a sad, angry, frustrated face, just a happy, content face, a frowny face, and then a silly face that would light up and all you would see from the outside was the emotion of this. So you could let other people know how you're feeling in traffic. 
given that uh, it turned on once, what I think a big misunderstanding is, is Timu is a marketplace. Similar to a lot of different online websites that you buy from, you're not necessarily buying directly from them. They are a facilitator and shipping and fulfillment unit to uh, help get these products out for different resellers. So sometimes you get a dud that you really liked and it doesn't work. Sometimes things suck, but they're supposed to. Vacuum cleaners. This was, I think, one of those flash sale things that was like $3. And this was, I think, a $12 or $15 unit. This is very much like your old Dust Devils. And, well, I've not seen anything like this. This one is uh, air blowing and dust suction. Usually you got to pay extra for the sucking and the blowing, but it, it, it came all at, all at once there. One thing I did do on purpose is they offered a wireless version, but I wanted to go ahead and just get the one you plug in to your cigarette lighter, because, you know, we've got great Pyrenees for to deal with. That is a lot. Uh, it comes with a bunch of different tips and a carrier bag. Is it worth, I think it was 10 times as much to buy that setup <laughs> than it was to buy this little guy. Oh. It's, it's loud. Well, it has a little one-way valve. Let me put it on the right way. It does come with, you know, a couple attachments, uh, different blowers and, and suckers, and a cable so you can USB recharge it. But is it any good? Can I even pick up its own bag? Okay, okay did way better than expected but this is one of those things where uh let's reset in the car real quick and see if this turns on i'm sorry little guy but sometimes size does matter let's give little david a try here all right all right i mean it is wow uh let's just say i did not expect it to work that well. All right, here's the Pyrenees hair. Okay, not doing well with the Pyrenees hair. All right, one way valve needs to close. It didn't quite, but um, let's just say way better than expected. Let's try this guy. Listen, I'm not a product reviewer but it is outperforming the little guy. Oh no, there's, there's a substantial difference. It's just a lot bigger and it has more attachments that I think will make it work a whole lot better. But if you want a little vacuum for your desk for a couple dollars, holy cow, way, way better than expected. But the one I'm gonna keep in the truck just because the truck is huge I can't say spending more guarantees you getting something better because one, it, it blows air. This one can't blow air. So I guess you could theoretically dust your keyboard and desk. I don't think it's intended to vacuum an entire car where this one is. All right, so we just plugged our brand new tire that has a leaky, you know, bead on it, but we'll pretend, you know, you had a flat tire. We switch this over to PSI. And we told it we want 30. You've got your plus or minus to set. Trigger turns it on. It locks on. Now, to be fair, asking it to inflate a totally flat tire is a big ask, but it's realistic. So let us uh, let this thing run and see what happens. Well, it started raining and I ran inside, but uh, the battery went dead. We didn't charge it completely. So it's not the tool's fault, but it did lock on. It did pump, as pumping it up from dead flat. So, you know what? Unlock, please. For a little $20 tool, that gets a pass. And now it's really wet. So let me go recharge it some more and uh, let's get on to testing some other things, but I'd buy that and put it in the truck. 
since we drive these really old cars, you're gonna find yourself on the side of the road needing some of those tools, or you're gonna need a part that your friend's gonna bring out to you. But you got 45 minutes to kill on the side of the road. Well, I found a whole selection of products that are perfect for the times you're stuck on the side of the road. That's probably my favorite. <laughs> It was actually kind of a fun conversation. Golly, that kind of hurt. I just hit myself with a rock. When we were talking about the different products, they were like, why on earth do you want an RC car to fix cars? And I'm like, we're not trying to fix cars with this. We're just trying to have fun while our car is broken. So what this little guy is, is a brushless, all wheel drive, just little fun truck. When I bought it, it was $79. I'm gonna say this. I've got thousands and thousands of dollars worth of like racing level stadium trucks and RC stuff at the house. For the money, this is probably the best performing RC car I've ever had. It's not perfect, but the amount of tech the speed it's capable of, even comes with a wheelie bar, if you want, but it's a whole lot of fun. So the whole point of the RC car is obviously we're not fixing the truck with it. It's not something you're gonna necessarily honestly have in the truck the whole time on a road trip. But I kind of wanted to say, hey, as a car guy, there's a whole lot of fun things that you can get pretty cheap ordering online and I'm gonna say for the money, it is the best $79 RC car I've ever driven. Take a second and jump on Team You might find one or two entertaining things and cheap enough you can keep it in your truck so when you're broke down waiting for your friend to come get you, you're at least entertained, right? Well, what did you guys think of my budget road trip essentials? The headlights do look a whole lot better than they used to. Uh, we got most all the yellowing that was on the outside polished out. We've got a good radio. We've got some basic hand tools we can carry around with us. Maybe not the best deal, but they're gonna help you out in a pinch. We're gonna get our tires fixed. There's a whole lot of good things that we were able to score for not a lot of money. Plus, I'm still gonna say it, that stupid little RC truck. Yes, I'm a 40 year old who likes toys. That's why you're all watching. You're, you like toys, be it cars or car related things. It's okay. You know, we're grown ups. We can do grown up things like buy RC cars. But I was really honestly very surprised. I expected us to have a whole lot more strikeouts. That silly little vacuum. I was really honestly very bummed about that silly emoticon face. I was looking forward to that thing working. Didn't work out. So that does sometimes happen. But what are some of your road trip essentials? What would you make sure to have in your vehicle, budget or not budget related, uh, make sure you're gonna get where you're going. Obviously we got the safety stuff, water, blankets, and that style of essentials. But what are you gonna keep yourself entertained with? What are you gonna wanna have to patch your hoopty back together and keep on going? Let me know, comment down below what you're gonna make sure you to put in it or comment your best Timu find. Again, big thank you to Timu, they really just said, Here's your budget, go for it, have some fun. And I did. And we found a lot of pretty good things hiding out there. So make sure when you're shopping, you uh, properly read the description so you don't end up with a tiny funnel like I did, but there's some really good stuff hiding there. And uh, you can avoid the 14 middlemen uh, when you're trying to buy it and get it here shipped to you. So more information for you to go shopping in the description box below. I'm Jared, whoops. Don't break my mirror. I'm Jared reminding you guys to always make questionable purchases, especially if you can save a little bit of money on it. We'll see you.